Welcome to the Strategies to Reduce Entrepreneurial Burnout. The presenters is Evil um, Singleton, and I'll now turn things over to the presenter. Thank you. So greetings to you all from Somerville, South Carolina. As she stated, I am Eva Singleton presenting on strategies to reduce entrepreneurial burnout. I am a doctoral candidate in the business administration program. Um, my specific business problem is that some entrepreneurs lack strategies to reduce burnout in the initial three years in business. I feel that entrepreneurial burnout is an important topic to research because it facilitates the need to assess the entrepreneur which is the person behind the business. Sometimes we talk about small business failure, but we actually don't talk about the person behind those operations. So entrepreneurship is important for economic growth. I live in the United States and our US economy prospers because of the contribution from entrepreneurs like small business owners. Small businesses are responsible for 99% of business firms in the US. Our government supports the development of entrepreneur endeavors by providing resources because of the positive economic impact that, that it brings. However, with available government support, resources, and funding opportunities, still 50% of new small business owners fail in the first five years of business, according to the SBA, Business Administration. In some cases, before a business owner fails, they experience burnout. And burnout includes emotional exhaustion and a, and a decreased sense of accomplishment, which is usually a consequence of stress and the mismanagement of available resources. Entrepreneurs start businesses for different reasons. Many start without being sufficiently prepared or without assessing who they are and what they bring to their business as an asset. Some may not understand fundamentals of entrepreneurship or have business acumen, or didn't take time to think about entrepreneurial types. Entrepreneurs are not a monolith. Every entrepreneur is different, but there are three main entrepreneurial types, the self-employed, business owners and core entrepreneurs, or you can say them as the creators, the builders or the operators. An entrepreneur, uh, could also just be someone that has entrepreneurial tendencies. But it's important to identify the individual strengths and weaknesses that individuals bring to their business. Having a gift or a talent does not equate to being an entrepreneur, but it could be a path to entrepreneurship. So aspiring and novice entrepreneurs may experience burnout prematurely simply for just not having the knowledge to think through certain things and think through strategies to help them reduce business burnout due to risk. So entrepreneurship is the appropriate mindset and skills to facilitate business and it can lead to personal growth. Next slide. So the purpose of my qualitative multiple case study was to explore strategies entrepreneurs use to reduce burnout. And I chose the qualitative multiple case study to really understand the firsthand experience of entrepreneurs. So I was looking to have those social interactions to capture the lessons learned to answer my research question, which is what strategies do entrepreneurs use to reduce burnout in their initial three years of business? I was not looking for statistics or just blanketed answers of yes or no. I wanted to really understand and glean from those with tried and true experience to help those aspiring and in, in new entrepreneurs. I am hoping that the business impact from this study will result in the increased sustainability and entrepreneur opportunities but more significantly, I hope that my study challenges and encourages entrepreneurs to assess themselves before going into business and even after they start their business to keep checking on who they are in relation to their business. Like complete a SWOT analysis on themselves, not only the business, 
but for them to identify truly and to know their unique strengths and weaknesses, their unique opportunities and threats that they bring to their business so that they could form tailor-made strategies. An entrepreneur with a family may have different risks than an entrepreneur that does not have a family that live inside their household. Strategies to help entrepreneurs think through those types of things can be very important when trying to develop a business. And in doing so, may help reduce exposure to burnout and provide work-life balance, you know, to establish the appropriate buffers that they need to exceed. And this leads me to my conceptual framework for this study, which is the self-leadership theory by Charles Manns. So the self Self-leadership is the ability to manage oneself strategically to achieve goals. True self-leaders are able to lead themselves to complete the most unfavorable tasks, all because it's necessary to get them where they need to go. So they apply behavioral and cognitive strategies. Those strategies could be something simple as of living or using a calendar or having certain people and resources in place to call on, different things like that. But of course, more in-depth strategies as well. Mann's developed the self-leadership theory, trying to gain a better understanding of organizational behavior, like how to control performance. But man's learned that the best type of control comes from within and starts from those personal values and beliefs. So self-leadership is the ability to lead oneself strategically from the inside, from that internal locus of control. Uh, and in it, including those cognitive and behavioral strategies, it also focuses on natural rewards and constructive thought strategies as well. Controlling the way you think and act could also be a contributor to you experiencing burnout or not. I chose this framework because I felt that it would be fitting for entrepreneurs to be effective self-leaders to strategically achieve their desired outcomes which can result into business sustainability. Next slide. So it is a fact that first time entrepreneurs, and I have said this before, does not, that for many first time entrepreneurs does not, do not sustain their business endeavors. Unfortunately, many begin their businesses without the necessary competencies to help reduce the risk of business burnout and failure. Incompetence is one of the leading causes of business failure, according to the University of Tennessee. So in essence, for entrepreneurs, um, what you do not know could actually hurt you or lead to business failure. Entrepreneurs starting a business could experience burnout due to having to manage challenging unknowns and at times mismanaging risks that they are aware of and sometimes just also just lacking professional development and trying to compete in some very dynamic markets without proper preparation or a mentor. You know, a mentor could also be a strategy to use that entrepreneurs could use. So doing so without strategies can understandably lead to frustrating times. Therefore, identifying strategies to help entrepreneurs reduce burnout uh, could be very helpful. Uh, but just also know that work-related stress is very common and should be expected, but also having a plan to mediate those stress are very important. Some people thrive under pressure and stress while others do not, but no matter what, burnout can lead to business failure. And let's not forget about, and I kind of mentioned this before, how, how someone's personal life can become a business risk. Entrepreneurs can experience burnout, like, like stated before, trying to raise children or dealing with health issues or trying to take care of a parent unexpectedly. Unexpectedly, So strategies to reduce burnout may be helpful, starting with a risk management plan to capture every possible threat to the business and thinking about how to mitigate them. And I feel that the self-leadership theory can play a vital role to help entrepreneurs. Um, does the building blocks of self-leadership are the social cognitive theory, which addresses self-efficacy, which is the belief in one's own capacity. Also a building block is the self-determination theory, you know, having 
the need for determined to be determined and having competence. Um, another one is the self-regulation theory, the ability to, to utilize and have self-control at the appropriate times. And also the self-management theory of how people complete the required tasks using behavioral and cognitive strategies. And lastly, positive psychology is a building block to self-leadership because uh, controlling your emotions and having positive emotions, good character traits, and intentionality uh, can help produce self-leading work. Next slide. So again, I chose the qualitative method because I felt my research question could be better answered by collecting subjective data to understand complex experience of entrepreneurs. I decided to collect a sample size from licensed uh, barber entrepreneurs in the Tri-County area of Charleston, South Carolina, in operation for a minimum of three years who have implemented successful strategies to reduce burnout. I use non-probability -prob and snowballing sampling uh, to find my research participants. And for the non-probability sampling, that just means that I did not get an entire list of all the licensed barbers in my geographic, geographic area. Instead, I just Google define qualified participants. Um, and then I use snowballing for those that provided consent. I asked them if they knew someone that qualifies and that would be a good candidate. Um, so as my primary data collection method, I conducted semi-structured interviews using Google Meet to capture the firsthand experiences using an interview protocol. And for my secondary, I use public documents. So barbers are a little different. Some of them tend not to keep like formal company documents. Therefore, for public documents, I reviewed and collected data from their business or their social media websites. Um, and I looked at their appointment calendars, their customer reviews, their location. Some on their websites had their education and other strategic factors to better understand them and to triangulate uh, with the interview uh, data that I collected. Um, I analyzed the data using the thematic analysis after organizing all of my primary and secondary data. Um, the thematic analysis is the methodology researchers can use to identify, analyze, and interpret open-ended responses uh, to create the themes in qualitative research designs. The thematic analysis is the process of compiling, disassembling, assembling, interpreting, and concluding research findings. And I decided to complete mine using Excel. I did not purchase any software. Um, but uh, I desire to answer the research question uh, because, which is what strategies do entrepreneurs use to reduce burnout in the initial three years in business? Uh, I decided, decided on that research question because of the possible social change implications, which are you know, the potential to lower unemployment, um, to increase tax revenues to fund infrastructure for education and social programs to benefit the local people and the communities in which small businesses operate. Uh, remember, small business owners contribute greatly to economic growth, and we need entrepreneurs to succeed and find strategies to reduce burnout in their initial years and iteratively thereafter. Um, my next slide are my references, and I do not have any final remarks. Uh, therefore, I am ready to invite any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, thank you so much to the presenter um, for your sharing your presentation with us. You guys can now drop questions in the chat. Sue, so, I see your first question. Um, why did you select Barbers as your entrepreneurial study? So um, at my previous church that I attended, um, there were, uh, we had programs to help people with entrepreneurship, so to speak meaning um, there were some people that um, that may have been incarcerated and trying to find a career path to make money. And aren't, uh, in barbership and um, what was one of the traits that we facilitated some people into to, to gain a trade. Um, those people were very skillful and talented. Um, they found that they had a gift, but that didn't mean that they had the appropriate entrepreneurial skills. 
Um, some of them made great money and they was able to thrive into making careers for themselves, but others struggled. So as I decided to look into strategies to help entrepreneurs that may, you know, in, in the array of fields that people can explore entrepreneurship, I wanted to target target um, a sample of people that may have a gift or a talent that tr that becomes an entrepreneur and see how those ones that succeed thrives. So maybe I can bring those strategies to help others that may have a talent or skill. So being familiar with barbers and knowing that's a trade that people can get into without education, without a formal education, um, but they could make a successful lifestyle. Um, so I decided to choose a career field like that to glean from. Hope that answered your question. Okay, hello oh, again. Reference. We have a few more. We actually have quite a few uh, more minutes left in the chat or the time slot for this presentation. So if you guys have any questions, comments that you want to drop in the chat, I'll leave it open um, for a few more minutes for you to do so. I think the presenter did a really good job. Um, so great job, Eva. Thank you. And would you also please uh, go back to my reference slide? Sure. Hold on. Okay. Um, there was a question to, well, a request to show my references um, for Christopher Nick. Any other questions? Okay. That's two of them. Okay, so did you find that the successful participants practice self-care? I did. Um, I did. Uh, self-care became very important um, because in order for for people to have like or try to create their form of work-life balance, um, they had to properly care for themselves. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs, and from just talking with a few of them, uh, you know, have this hustle mentality that I have to get, you know, get all that I can. They would overbook their schedules in their in their initial years, um, just trying to take all clients or anyone that uh, would solicit for their business. Um, and then they had to learn that they had to 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 time block like I'm only going to be open from this period to this period because I have to take time to professionally develop I have to attend conferences I have to build myself up I have to have time for my personal care and family um I was talking to someone before um who well that you know was a barber but didn't have time to cut his hair um, because he was tired after work or just however and just becoming more knowledgeable but I have to be able to have time to present myself appropriately as well so I did find that successful participants uh, made it a great deal to start practicing self-care uh, because it helped them be able to focus better they were relaxed they were able to facilitate a more positive attitude and it was just very beneficial for them to take time for themselves. And another question, did you or will you look to the extent, at the extent the entrepreneurs develop business model? Sorry, I'm struggling. Sorry, I lost my place. You look at this entrepreneur develop business model and before the launch. Yes, I actually did look into that already. Um, so business model, um, some people developed a business plan, but what I've noticed is that for especially from the barbers that I've spoken to, the business plan wasn't like really a detail and it wasn't a true model. Like it didn't have like objectives of what they wanted to achieve besides they wanted a certain income amount. But because they have lacked, you know, with people with gifts and talents or in that type of service industry, you know, they may, may lack the business acumen to actually form what, you know, someone with a business background would actually specify as a business model. Um, so their business plans and things like that before launch consisted of, oh, I'm going to work, 
either I'm going to um, rent a space and hire other hire other barbers, or I'm going to uh, pay booth booth rent. But it wasn't like them really trying to build or scale the business. Um, so their models were in you know kind of like ineffective. It was just wildly plans or just steps that they wanted to accomplish, but it didn't speak to necessarily to the future development of their business. And I think for some of them, that may have been a cause to burnout um, because, you know, they're not, the, if they decided to do birth uh, to pay booth rent, you know, they're not necessarily thinking about uh, reoccurring clientele or marketing or, you know, the other factors that come into, you know, the cost of running a business. Um, so. I think for some of them, it did lead to to burnout in which they had to readjust themselves. Hope I answer that question for you. Um, what are the future plans once you complete your study? So I really want to influence um, I really want to continue researching and influence other scholarly materials when it comes to entrepreneurship and with project management. Um, one thing, you know, I'm a project manager by trade and a lot of our core competencies would really help entrepreneurs that do not have an educational background um, to really, really build their business, to really think about what's the scope, not just pertaining to barbers, but any entrepreneurs, you know, the cost and, you know, stakeholder engagement, um, you know, it could, project management competencies, I think, can really help. So I desire to influence some form of, you know, either a curriculum that I may develop or some type of online course or something to help those entrepreneurs that do not have a formal education uh, be more equipped and more prepared with the knowledge and resources that we have available to them to help them succeed and reduce burnout. Well, thank you guys for saying great job. Okay, so you mentioned necessary competencies. Was business related education mentioned at all in the additional page of research? Yes, in my resources, it did talk about business education um, reducing burnout. Um, and I think for the most part, uh, at least two of the people that I interviewed agreed that because they actually were the were the two that continued their education, really helped um, shorten their learning curve of running a business because they pursued other educational endeavors to build themselves up. So another necessary competencies besides that is like business acumen skills and working on themselves. Um, going back to these barbers that, that I had in mind for my study, you know, they may have been talented barbers, but they weren't necessarily good networkers. They didn't really talk well to know how to engage with people they weren't familiar with. So in order for you to be in a service industry, you know, there's a demeanor that, you know, there is a certain way to like carry yourself and to network and to build. And sometimes that's missing. Um, and that's okay. It's just to get yourself, you know, into plan to have the strategies and have the personal and professional development that's necessary to help you grow your business. Um, not doing anything about it shouldn't be, you know, an option is like, what else can you do? And that's why I think becoming a self leader to propel you, you know, well, not you, but you uh, to propel some one person to to go beyond what they already know to research and to do more and to develop and become who they need to be for their business to succeed and if it's something that that person can't become hire someone else to help uh, go to a vo to volunteer somewhere to gain the experience um, things like that so there are other competencies that are needed for for business to thrive and to reduce burnout because then they get frustrated because they're not having enough income or they feel like, you know, leaving a job to explore their entrepreneur endeavors become a become an even bigger burden because they're not succeeding. So burnout kind of attacks these entrepreneurs at different angles because while they're, they're happy and they want to explore their business in one area, but they suffer, suffer financially or they lose other important relationships and things like that. So, you know, developing those competencies and those professional development skills outside of education 
um, is very important to reduce burnout. Um, I think that's all. Okay, do we have any more questions for the presenter? You guys are welcome, okay. thank you. If we have no more questions, I wanna thank you guys for um, joining us. Thank the presenter, you did a great job. Um, thank I hope you, you one more it. question did come in. Okay, let's see. Um, is what type of education does a barber need to practice? Um, they really don't need, well, in the state of South Carolina, they don't necessarily need a formal education. They just have to pass the exam for licensure. Um, so one of the interviews that I did conduct, um, he uh, did not have a formal education. He learned on the job, but he was able to obtain his license. Um, so then you have one that do go to barber schools and things like that. So it really depends on what the state requirements are. Okay, that looks like that's, that's it. Um, thank you guys for joining us. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of um, their day and the rest of the sessions. Okay, well, thank you for facilitating this for me. And thank you all for, for tuning in for my presentation. I really appreciate it.